Hi, I'm Taylor Larson and I'm here today interviewing Megan McCander from ABC Australian Story. So Megan, why did you enrol at uni? Well, I always knew I wanted to go to uni. That was a definite thing for me, but I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. Um, at high school, my top subject was English. I like public speaking, I like drama. So I sort of just teamed that together and, and did journalism. Um, I also liked writing, so I thought it was a great fit for me. And in terms of USC, um, I liked that it wasn't very far from home. I'm from, the Sun um, I'm from Harvey Bay, so it wasn't very far from home. Um, you know, I could go home on the weekends if I wanted to. It's only about two and a half hours. Uh, I also came to one of the open days and I really liked the on-campus living because I was going to be moving here without any family and I need to live somewhere and find friends. So I moved to, uh, and lived on campus for my entire degree. Uh, and I also, from the beginning, was really interested in the study overseas program. That was one of my goals from day one. Uh, and when I, once I got here, um, I really loved it. So it was a great choice for me. Okay, so what, I guess, pushed you to want to go overseas and study abroad? Uh, so I studied at the University of Mississippi, which is called Ole Miss. And I did that uh, second semester, second year. And I did um, journalism subjects over there. Uh, I, I basically have always, had always wanted to go to America and thought this would be a great way to do it and I always sort of was fascinated with college life over there and that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, as I said, from first year, day one, I started making inquiries about that. It's called the GO program then. And I started looking at different universities in America and I always had it in my schedule that I was going to do it so I could... Um, save up all my elective subjects and do them all over in America. So I had to make sure I structured my courses to fit. And yeah, the, the offers for that program were really helpful. They helped me get there. Uh, I didn't know anything about the University of Mississippi. I always thought of, you know, the big capital cities. And here I was in Mississippi and it turned out to be amazing. Um, the full college experience, fraternities, sororities, football games. Um, so the social life was great. Uh, and obviously after my the courses I did, I could um, travel a little bit as well in America. The visa let me travel. And in terms of the work too, um, while I was there, the presidential debate was on between Barack Obama and John McCain. So that was really exciting. Um, I, the class was, so it was an internship class, it was full, but the overseas international office helped me and another girl from Amsterdam get into the class because we really wanted to be part of it. So I did an internship with MSNBC and they did an outdoor broadcast, almost kind of like sunrise, I guess. So we had to wrangle the crowd and the people had signs and they would analyse um, election results and that sort of thing live. So that was really interesting. Um, and also just witnessing the spectacle at all. We had live trucks and satellite trucks at the school. We had high security. It was just a really great experience. Didn't get to watch the debate. Didn't meet Barack Obama. <laughs> But um, I was there when he, when he got elected and um, got to sort of feel the vibe of how excited everybody was when he got elected. So um, I also got to do some radio courses over there, which when I was at USC wasn't a major part of the degree. So I got to go on Rebel Radio News, which is the university's radio station. So I got to do some radio experience, which was great, uh, and just experience another culture and um, a new place. And I think it really grew me as a person and as a student. Um, it was a really great experience. Probably one of the best things I've done while studying. <laughs> so how did that, the education you received over in Mississippi compare to your program here at USC? Uh, yeah, it was, it's definitely different studying in America. Um, they're big on homework and bits and pieces rather than large assignments. So you do lots of little homework things. Um, the, the subjects I did was just a pass or a fail. So it didn't um, affect my uh, GPA over here, which was great. And um, they also, there was also government scholarships to help get you over there. So you can't really lose. You, you, you get money to go there, you complete your course like you're supposed to, and um, you have a great time. So it's definitely worth it. But uh, that's probably all that's different, yeah. yeah. Just easier, to be honest. <laughs> So out of uni, uh, what was your first job? I started my journalism career at the Caboolture News, which I thought was very lucky because I didn't, you know, a lot of people have to move quite far away from home to start their first job. And I was just 
sort of half an hour down the road. So I was able to stay living in Mooloolaba and drive to Caboolture every day. Um, I got that job a week and a half after I finished my courses. And it sort of stemmed from doing an internship at the Sunshine Coast Daily. They were really pleased with how I did and that job was offered, so I took it. Uh, I think it was a great start to my degree. It wasn't like my dream job or anything, but it was great to be at a newspaper, which is what I strive to do, um, learning the ropes, learning all different rounds, police, um, council, arts, community, learn how to take photos, learn how to design a paper, all of that. So it was a great um, launching pad for me because I was then I was in the company and I could um, look for other opportunities. Did it meet your expectations, I suppose, of what you thought, you know, your first job would be or like what a newsroom environment would be like? Yeah, it wasn't a big newsroom. There was about six of us. Um, but I think it definitely matched what I was looking to do. Um, I, I was always interested in local news and um, newspapers. Um, I think local news is really important. Um, you know, it's not the big national breaking stories of the world, but it's the little things that affect people's lives, developments around their house, um, things being built near them. So it does affect a lot of people and a lot of people value local news. So I was really proud to be part of local news. Um, and yeah, I, you know, and I also learned the basics there, interviewing, writing, um, so it really set me up well. So after the Caboolture news, where did you sort of go from there and what were the challenges and yeah. I guess what were the highs and the lows? Yeah. So basically I was, I was at the Caboolture News and um, obviously still it's affiliated with the Sunshine Coast Daily so I still kept talking to the editor of the Daily and sort of putting my hand up for, for bigger opportunities because my goal was to be at a daily paper and um, eventually talked to the editor and I got the role at the Budgeon Chronicle um, which was great. It was, it's basically you're the editor and the journalist and the photographer so you're basically you're doing everything plus you're networking in the community, coming up with the story ideas, helping design the paper. So it's full on, um, it's a big role and you may flick through the paper and just think, oh yeah, but it's one person putting that together. So that was a huge challenge, um, a lot of hours spent in the office and it was a huge challenge to embed myself in a community. A lot of communities, especially Budroom, it's tight knit. Um, you know, they like, who's this person, you know? So I had to sort of embed myself in the community prove to them how much I did care, come up with story ideas, which can be challenging in a local community sometimes, getting hard news stories, but you just have to build up. It taught me how to build up contacts, keep a news diary um, and that sort of thing. So yeah, and, I, and so from there, um, I went to the Calandra Weekly, which is the same thing, doing a whole paper, but it's a larger paper, more pages, and it's a bigger community. So I had to do this, I had to start all over again, build trust, build contacts, build relationships and um, do the job like that. And then after that, so th at that point I was in the Sunshine Coast Daily Newsroom and at that point I got a job at the Daily doing general news, um, which is what I always wanted to do. Um, that was challenging at the beginning because you're writing, I wrote up to eight stories a day and that's eight different photos and you may talk to several people for each story. So it was very stressful, um, but very rewarding at the end of the day when you can get the paper out um, and you all have to work as a team because the paper doesn't just come out of nowhere. There's so many people involved to fill all those little spots. So I think um, my career was pretty organic. I didn't just jump straight into a national newsroom. I went as a cadet and then sort of just built up my skills along the way and um, eventually got to the daily. My round at the daily, um, I created a round called Tourism. That wasn't a round. I thought that was an important thing for the coast. And um, then I became police reporter which I would say was my dream job. Um, my goal was to be a police reporter at a Metro paper. Um, that hasn't happened yet, but um, you know, things have changed in my career. Uh, I, I loved it. I loved the, the adrenaline of it, the thrill of it. Um, it's very hard to build contacts in that round. You know, a lot of people in um, emergency services are, could be suspicious of media or unsure. So you have to work really hard to build up contacts and stories and chase those stories. And, uh, but I, I absolutely loved it. It was my favourite job. Um, and then I could see the potential that our website was getting more popular and becoming more important for us. And because I was doing the police round, I was already dealing with breaking news anyway and, the, and putting it online. So I thought I need to step into that. My friend of mine had the digital producer role. He left and went to the ABC. So I took his role and I was a digital producer at the Sunshine Coast Daily. Um, at that time, I was the only digital producer. 
So I tended to work really crazy hours because I felt obliged to keep the website and Facebook and Twitter ticking over. And Instagram, I was always doing things on the weekends and I sort of get really involved into any role I'm doing and um, I put my all into it, which can make my days very long. So I've learned to sort of um, balance my life and work a bit better as I get older. <laughs> so at the beginning, was it more doing a lot of stuff in your free time? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was sort of 13 hour days and that sort of thing. Um, no one was telling me to do that, but I just found if I wanted to be at it to be at the level it should be at, that's what was required. They've obviously changed their model now. There's several, from what I know, there's several digital producers and it's um, as it becomes more in demand, but um, it was a sort of a new world then, which is funny to say, because it wasn't that long ago. Uh, and obviously newspapers are evolving now and they're not just a newspaper. So um, yeah, it was a lot of work outside of ours. And then um, at The Daily, we could also write features. Or, and I did a lot of travel writing when I was at The Daily. That was definitely in your own time because you just don't have time. I was also the movie reviewer. So that was a nice perk. I got to go to the movies a lot. Um, and I found that really fun and a nice relief from writing about murder and car crashes and horrible things. So that was a fun little side, but it was on your own time. Um, yeah, and in terms of other stuff in my own time, um, I did a lot of internships while at university because I just figured everyone's going to have a piece of paper, but you need to have that experience to back you up. So the Sunshine Coast Daily Internship was through the uni, uh, but that was until my third year, th last semester, I did it at the very, very end. So prior to that, I would use the summer break to do internships in my local area in Harvey Bay. So I worked at the two local papers, um, a local magazine, Channel 7, uh, and then I did my study abroad and did um, the internship with MSNBC. Uh, I also, back then, I don't know if it exists anymore, there was a student magazine here on campus, so I was part of that, doing entertainment and fashion. Um, so that was fun. And so just anything I could think of that would give me experience, I was definitely there for it. <laughs> Apart from the internships, what yeah. other part of your parts of your degree have been helpful in your career and, I don't know, different skill sets or knowledge that you've mm -hmm. learnt? I like that, um, I like that the tutors and lecturers here were journalists themselves or retired or freelance. So they had real life advice and examples they could give us. It wasn't just all textbook. Um, I learned to work to deadlines because obviously with assignments things, you, you definitely learn to work to deadlines. And a lot of our assignments were really practical, which I liked. Uh, I learned a lot of the basics at uni. So researching, interviewing, writing, all really key things. Uh, and just confidence that I can get a job and I can do it. Um, my, you know, my mentor, I guess, was the late Stephen Lamble. Um, he was fantastic. He, I would, he showed me how to do a portfolio. He connected me with people and he really invested in my career. So I think he made a huge difference um, to me. Um, is there anything you regret not taking advantage of while you were at USC? Um, not really, to be honest. I really just dove into it and took whatever opportunities there were. Um, when I went here, USC didn't have as many social groups or official groups. Uh, so, uh, so I found my biggest sort of way to be part of the uni is living on campus was a big one because I would stick around on campus because I knew home was just down the path. So um, sort of being on campus here and mingling with, with other people and then obviously living on campus and meeting new people. So I really felt like my whole life was uni and I really was into it. And as I said, I did the study abroad program I did the student magazine and I just sort of, whatever was going, I was happy to, to take it on and do it. Can you just tell me a little bit about your current position? After being at um, Sunshine Coast Daily, uh, my friend who left convinced me to go for a job at the ABC in Brisbane in online. Um, that job never really eventuated, I'm not sure what happened there, but I was called back and told I didn't get the position, however, would you like to come and do some casual work? Uh, full-time hours but casual at ABC News Online. Uh, it was a it was big decision for me. I had a full-time job at The Daily and security and I was one of their senior reporters and I would be leaving to be a new, new staff member in a casual role, which is very daunting. Uh, but I felt like at that point in my career I needed a change. I'd been at The Daily for nearly six years. 
well, including the weeklies, uh, and I just needed something different. Um, we had a lot of, you know, a lot of news, a bit of doom and gloom in newspapers, so I felt like, should I be moving out of them? Um, and the long hours were really getting to me, so I thought, I'm going to go for this and do it, because I thought, once I'm in the ABC, you know, I can move, move from there. And it was a really great decision for me. So I moved to Brisbane and I did casual work, full-time hours but casual, uh, for nearly two years, year and a half. Um, that was excellent. Uh, the great things about it was I was in a national newsroom, so we're cashing, covering national and international stories. It was a big team. And when I was there, I got to see them start and build the mobile desk, which is uh, an entire team dedicated to mobile phones and mobile news, which has now grown, but I was there when it started. I got to learn social media, uh, using their system to process stories for online, uh, writing headlines, writing teasers, trying to sell a story, how to sell a story on social. So it was really fantastic. And, there's a lot of, and there was some senior people and team I could learn from. The downside of it, it was shift work, so it was tough. You were starting at four in the morning, f finishing at 1 a.m., strange rosters, six-day rosters, so that was a pretty taxi. Uh, but everyone was really great in the team, so that helped. <laughs> and then uh, while I was doing that, uh, I used to do some shifts for Landline, which is a national rural TV program, doing their social media. As luck would have it, Australian Story program was looking for a new digital producer their existing one was leaving and was told to basically replace herself and, and find some options. So um, they talked to Landline, Landline recommended me and then I was at Australian Story, uh, which was great. Uh, it, it was also another risky move. It was a three month contract with no um, guarantee I could get my online job back. Uh, but I thought it's such an iconic program, I can't not take this. Uh, it was in the same building, so my, life didn't, my lifestyle didn't change. Uh, so, yeah, I started doing that three-month contract, turned into a six-month contract, turned into a full-time job. So I've been there about 18 months now, and um, I've helped grow their digital presence. So my job is to take the 30-minute episode and, and the story and turn it into something that's suited for a digital audience and sort of changing the mindset that what we put on TVs, well, we'll just put that on Facebook. It's not the same. And, and that's something the, the team is kind of working through. Um, the, most of the team have been there the whole 22 years the show's been going. So, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a sort of a shift to digital, uh, but we're really thriving in it. Um, while I was there, my first year, we got 27 million views on our videos and I cut every single one of them. Um, I used Premiere to cut our videos. Um, and it is quite challenging to condense or, or manipulate a 30 minute episode into maybe a minute that's digital friendly. And I try and make the videos a self-contained story so they can be a standalone story that can be shared to anybody, even if they haven't watched the show. Um, so I am promoting the show, obviously, but I'm not just there to, um, to market the show. I'm, I'm more about sharing our stories in a new way with new audiences, audiences that might not watch our show. Our audiences are generally skewed older and female, and our Facebook is female and younger. So. Um, we're sort of reaching new people and I also um, we upload the episodes to YouTube as well. So how is yep. you're speaking about knowing your audience there a bit more how important is it to know your audience so you can target it at them especially with the media you're producing? Yeah um, yeah it's very important to target the audience we as I said the the content for TV is very different to the content we put um, on social media uh, it has to be bite-sized, easy digestible, uh, understandable, and we also caption and caption the, what they're saying and do sort of word cards to try and move people through the video. Um, but knowing the audience is extremely important, and a big part of my job is um, writing reports every week on how our page is going, who our fans are, how long they're watching a video for, when they stop watching, did they put the volume up? <laughs> These things can kind of shape what I do in the future. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's a definite shift in thinking for a lot of the team and um, we're definitely trying to move with the times. Do you, so you're not doing as much like um, reporting yeah. as much anymore. Do you miss it? Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, it's 
I always thought I'd want to be award-winning journalist, um, police reporter, as I said, was my, my goal. Um, but as technology changed and the industry changed, so did my job um, description and my job title. And um, I'm really glad I've gone with it because, you know, it, it's definitely where it's heading. If the show ever, for some reason, doesn't exist, um, I feel like we would still have a digital presence somehow. Um, I think... What was I going to say? Yeah, when, when big stories happen, I do think, oh, gee, I wish I was a reporter again and out doing that because you never lose the, um, the thirst for a good story. But, you know, I'm still in uh, a current affairs environment. We still do break stories on Australian Story. We have exclusive interviews. Uh, I'm still right next door to the um, ABC News Online newsroom and I talk to them frequently because we have an online story every week as well as the 30 minute episode. So I'm still thinking about news angles, right? I, I help the producers write their stories. They write it, but I help them and write it and sub it for them. I'm still thinking about headlines, how to sell a story. Um, so there's still definitely journalism. Um, journalism attributes are still really important in what I do, but it's just amazing that my job now didn't even exist when I was at uni. Um, it, we didn't even really talk about social media. When I was at uni, it just didn't exist. Um, so it's really, really impressive how the media's changed. You were saying before you were there when they were setting up this mobile yeah. network. So how else has the industry changed even since you've started your career? Yeah. I guess the major change for journalists is they have to really be multi-skilled now. Um, when I was at uni, it was like, do you want to do print? Do you want to do radio? Do you want to do TV? Uh, do you want to do online? But now, especially at the ABC, you've got to be able to do everything uh, while taking photos, while doing some tweets, while doing live news crosses, live radio crosses. Um, you really have to be multi-skilled. So I think that's changed, the industry's changed a lot because of that. Uh, and also social media, um, it's a big one for us. Um, it's definitely changed the way we work, the, you know, the order in which we put our news out. And it's changed jobs, you know. Um, I only just got Facebook when, in my third year, I think, of uni. And now that's my whole job. So it's, the media is probably one of the fastest growing and changing um, industry series. Um, especially at a time when people feel like they can just get their news by themselves on social media. We need to prove that we're still valuable to their lives. And we need to, we need to connect with those audiences on social. Um, and we have to think differently to, to reach them. So with the um, stuff that sort of stayed the same, like networking, communication, everything like that, how important are they in the industry, like those sets of skills? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, even if you're a, social, a digital producer or even if you're uh, a journalist or an editor, you're still at the end of the day using your editorial judgment. Um, you're still thinking about defamation. You're still thinking about, because even a tweet can get you in trouble or a Facebook post. So I'll quite, I usually get everything checked by my boss before it goes up, my EP. And sometimes even this week, you know, I had my social media plan legaled by the lawyers just in case. So you're still using the skills of legal um, concerns. Interviewing, you know, is still important. Um, learning how to talk to people, because if I do go out on a shoot with the crew, I have to chat with the talent. Even though it's not my story, you've still got to be a people person. Uh, I, think, I think too, you need to sort of be resilient as well and learn how to deal with a high, high workload, because um, that's bound to happen in journalism. So being able to sort of juggle a few things at, at once at uni sort of helps you become um, able to do that in the workroom as well. So what skills or knowledge do you think are valuable for students about to enter the workforce and why? Uh, I think students really need to be proactive. Um, you know, at the end of the day, everyone's going to have a journalism degree and a piece of paper, but what's going to set you apart? What have you done to put yourself out there? Um, you need to be willing to work for free willing to do jobs you don't even really want to do in terms of, you know, you might have to get the coffee or you might have to do some photocopying. That's fine. You know, you're in the newsroom, you're watching it playing out. You're in that environment. So I say be proactive, reach out for internships, or even if they say you can come in for two days, take it. You know, it's something to put on the resume. So how important is it for journalists and even students to build a brand for themselves? 
Yeah, I think it's really important in today's age to, to brand yourself as a journalist, even if you're a student, have an online presence. Uh, when I was police reporter, unfortunately, I wrote a lot of um, obits for people that had passed away in car crashes and things like that. And the main way we'd reach out to family was Facebook. Um, we'd have to do it in a very delicate way. And if you've got a profile picture of yourself partying or something, it really doesn't look good. So I created a second Facebook for, just for work purposes. It also allows your net, um, contacts to add you on Facebook and you don't have to be worried. So I could have councillors and the mayor and um, people like that, police, uh, be my friend on Facebook and not have any concerns about it. So I think that's um, a great way, one of the great ways to, to brand yourself. Um, having said that, yeah, that wasn't at USC when I was here. As I said, social media wasn't really a topic that we talked about during my degree, but it just goes to show how much the industry has changed, that you know, entire courses and degrees are, have changed as well. So what do you look for in a new employee or if you were to, I don't know, recommend someone? I think um, for me, a big part of it is confidence, um, but also team with skills. <laughs> so. Yeah, especially in journalism, you can't be a, you can't be a wallflower. You've really got to be confident and be sure of yourself. In journalism, you've got to be really confident, be able to speak well, and be able to be connect with people if you want to get your stories. So I look for someone who's confident, um, someone who isn't afraid to give something a try, even if it might not be right. Um, I don't really do much hiring, but the interns we have had at Australian Story. I really, you know, sometimes you have to do a lot of just watching and I know that sort of can be a bit dull sometimes, but someone who's happy to watch and ask questions and um, just soak it all up. What advice do you have for journalism students about to graduate and start their own careers? Don't be afraid to apply for jobs outside of your town. You can't always get your dream job in the place where you live, so be prepared to move. Um, you, for all you know, it could be the best decision you ever make. I know a lot of friends who've gone um, out, out bush or out regional or rural for, for journalism jobs and they've absolutely loved it because you're thrown in and you have to do absolutely everything and you really do grow as a journalist be, or as a person because you've, you've had to just do everything and put yourself out there. So I think don't be afraid to move. Um, I think, and then, and then just grow from there. I think... Um, don't be afraid to apply for jobs that might even be above, like higher than your skill set. It's always, even if you get an interview, it's nice to practice getting, doing interviewing. Um, what else? I think internships, as I said, internships are very important. The ability to have on your resume a, a nice list of, uh, you know, a diverse range of internships is really helpful just to set yourself apart from the crowd. Um, that's probably it. Um, so you were saying before how when you moved to ABC Online it was a bit of a gamble because it was only like casual work and a contract. How, I don't know, do you feel not really secure with your work when you're getting those smaller contracts? Like does it put you yeah. off or yeah. what's that like? In a lot of uh, workplaces, especially in journalism, contracts are pretty normal. And a lot of people can go for years and years just doing contract work and they're, they're fine with that. For me, the thought of... Um, being casual, not even a contract, going from full-time to casual was really daunting and it was a gamble for me. It was quite scary. And you sort of always feel like you've got to be the best employee you can be because, because you're casual any minute you could be dropped. Uh, you know, and then when you've got a contract, you feel a bit better because, okay, I've got six months here. Um, but you need to just remember you're not the only one. Um, it's ABC have a lot of contract have a lot of contract positions, and it's quite normal. Um, and it's the way a lot of businesses do run, um, just for budget reasons, I suppose. Uh, but for me personally, I would prefer to be full time, which I am now, um, and I'm at Australian Story, which is fantastic. Um, but yeah, the concept of being casual was a new one for me, and it was quite scary. <laughs> So what are the perks of being a journalist or even a digital producer? For my role now, it's the perk of um, being able to be creative every week. It's something different every week. We've got a different story every week. I get to edit, write, sometimes interview. Um, I get to be part of a program that's, you know, a national program that's loved by a lot of people, which I'm really proud about. Um, when you're at a commercial um, media, I got more actual perks. 
Um, for example, in 2014, I went to China um, on, a, on a travel for mill. And so you go on the travel for mill, it's all covered by different businesses. And then your job is to come back and write several stories for the paper, feature stories. Um, obviously, we disclose everything was paid for, but that was a nice perk. I got to go to China for two weeks um, and I'd never been before, so that was really nice. Um, also, at the newspaper, especially local papers, they're itching for content. So your story ideas are, um, you know, the world's your oyster, whatever you want to write about, really. So I got to do, I did the movie reviews. So I got to go to the movies. So that was nice. So I did movie reviews to police reports the police stories, council stories, um, arts, which I also love writing about arts and theatre, so I got to sort of express that part of myself. Um, you get to do business stories, development stories. So, you know, a real perk of being a journalist is your day is different every day, which can be overwhelming, but you're constantly doing something different. It's not boring, that's for sure. And as I said, if you go local, you really have the opportunity to just do whatever you want, basically. Whereas a lot of metros, you sort of pigeonholed into a, into a round, which there's nothing wrong with that. It's just um, for your first job, it's great to just do everything. What skills have you had to learn on the job, learn to adapt to? So one of the things when I came to Australian Story was they didn't adapt their content for digital. So they would put up snippets of the program, but it wasn't really digital friendly. So they didn't have a lot of movement on their videos or or shares and things like that. So I wanted to come in and be able to do short form videos, which is what ABC News Online had been doing for a long time. Problem was, I actually didn't know how to edit videos because I'd come from papers and it wasn't really a task that we had to do. Um, we The videos, if we had videos, it was done by our photographers. So I thought, okay, I need to, I need to learn this. <laughs> so between my three month contract and my six month contract, which was a summer break, the show goes off air for summer, uh, I had four days a week work um, and I had a fifth day free. So I used to come in on the fifth day and learn Premiere Pro, which is an editing system. And so for the last year I've been editing videos and you know some of them got up to three million views. And we have um, ABC News sharing them and other ABC pages. So just sort of putting yourself out there and going, okay, I need to learn this, I'm just gonna do it, um, was a great thing. Um, ABC has a lot of training, but there was just no, no time or anything scheduled to teach me that. So that's something I took upon myself. Was it frustrating? Yeah, it was because, you know, I had to come in on my day off <laughs> and learn it, which I'm really glad I did, but I had to come in on my own time and learn this. And I just sort of constantly just ask questions still to this day to the video desk. Hey, how do you do this? How do you do this? So just not being afraid to open your mouth and um, ask for advice. It's no one's going to be upset at you for that. So it was frustrating that I knew what our page, Facebook page had the potential to do, but I didn't have the skills to fulfil that. So I just said, okay, I've got to get these skills and, and went and did it. So I think my videos are getting better and better by the week. Um, yeah. So I have a question because I was like binge watching Australian Story over the week. Um, when you're editing the videos, do you get emotional? Yeah, we do. So when so I get to see the episodes as they change and develop. So I might see the really early bed where it's just grabs, no pictures, no music, very simple to the finished product. Um, especially if it's being edited in Brisbane, I can watch the editor editing it. And yeah, you, you my first viewing, you know, you can get emotional just like the average viewer. Um, um, the producers are very connected to their talent, um, but sometimes I come in fresh, don't know much about the story, and I'll watch that rough version and go, oh, that's really, that's really good. And um, it's the skills of our producers that get that emotion out of people. It's, um, they're pretty amazing the way they can do their interviews. It's incredible. And, um, sorry, I got it. Sorry. Our, our producer, Greg Hassel, he did a story recently about a guy with motor neuron disease, Justin Yerbury. He said even when he watched it on TV that night, he'd been working on this story for months, knew it like the back of his hand. He still cried when he watched it. So uh, we hope we can get that emotion out of the viewers as well. How do you deal with the stress of being on these short-term contracts? Yeah, it was a really tough time for me when I was casual and I just really wanted to be full-time. As I said, uh, it didn't sit well with me, the fact that I didn't have security. So it's that sort of feeling of not having security and being quite vulnerable 
um, you felt vulnerable, that sort of it did shake you a bit. But I just had to persevere and prove I was a good employee and you know worthy of a contract and also just keeping an eye on the job board and looking for other jobs in the ABC and, um, and just sort of making contacts within the ABC. So as I said, taking the job at ABC was a great thing to do because it got me in the company and then I could make contacts within the company. And, and as a, Australian Story was just a recommendation. I didn't even apply. So the fact that I was recommended sort of, I think, showed that I had proven myself. Uh, I loved ABC News Online. I, I've learned a lot and a lot of those skills I use at Australian Story. But um, the contract life, I don't think is for me. Uh, but a lot of people love it because they can be flexible and work at all different places. Have there ever been moments where you thought you couldn't do the job or it was too overwhelming? And if so, how did you deal with it? In my early career, like my first job, I was so enthusiastic that I didn't have any doubt I could do it. Um, I, I was very confident that I could do it and I just put my all into it. So the first job, I was like, I've got this. <laughs> and I was willing to do any round and uh, very happy with it. So, and I was really glad I was finally working as a journalist. Um, I think the fact that I got the job so quickly out of uni within sort of a week and a half, two weeks, um, off the back of an internship, made me think, okay, well, I must have something here, I can do this, that was fine. It was the move from weekly to daily newspapers that um, threw me a bit, um, just the volume of stories I had to write. And I do remember going to my chief of staff and saying, how do I, what do I do? Like juggling, um, you know, is mostly phone calls or sometimes going out to stories. So juggling eight stories with several talent per story, teeing up photos, and then, you know, a major car crash could happen, I have to go out to that. So um, I do remember having a, a good talk to my chief of staff and getting tips from her on how to, how to do this. And she just talked to me about prioritising time management. Um, and she's, you know, and, and they were great because they said, you know, if these eight stories don't come up, no problem, you know, we'll just go with the best. So, yeah, that, that was probably the biggest challenge for me was that transition. But once I got into the swing of it, um, it was just routine really. <laughs> Thank you so much for chatting with us today.